the board at the town of Adair. The gals are all we do flock in the square. One brings me a bottle of lovely sweet cake for to treat me unknowns to their parents. There's one from Ashgaden and one from the Pike, another from Arden, they have to be guided. Though being from the mountain, her stockings are white, and the salary should run the they shared the same conviction and the same energy, I think, and the same strength in their singing. Um, they, if you had your eyes shut, you would be uh, in no doubt who was singing. You could, I could distinguish, of course, between John and Tim, but they were very similar. Of course, from you find that often, don't you, in families? At singing sessions, I used to go to a festival called the Innes Diamond Singing Festival. Used to be on in, in his time. And, you know, your father used to be at that, I think, and I think it was there I heard him first, I'd say. Um, and I remember I was only starting singing myself when I heard your father, and I like, I knew, like, that he just, he had a fabulous, or a very, I say, a solid style, and he was a highly respected singer. and. I'd be kind of in awe of singing in front of him, really. Do you know what I mean? The likes of him, we'll say, because he would have been well established now at the time, we'll say. And I was only dipping my feet in, you know, singing, singing in public. Early, yeah, years. yeah. And, um, but I love listening to, I just love listening to, to his singing. But I think it was at one, at one of those weekends in, in um, at the Ennis Diamond Festival. By the twilight in the morning, as I rolled out upon the dew, with my morning cloak around me, intending for my flocks to view, I there spied a fair maid. I own she was a beauty bright, and I took her for Diana, the evening star that woos the night. His, his, uh, his style and he, the, the tone of his voice, I think, like he, he had a tone in his voice that was absolutely lovely, you know, a kind of a clear bell of a tone in his voice. Like I, like I say, I can't put a date on when I got to know John, but I know that he always impressed me as a traditional singer. And I, I came to traditional music and singing through Shannos and through the Irish language, really. Uh, and John was one person that I knew, one of the few people I know, who sang in English, but who sounded, who reminded me so much of some of the great Shano singers, in his style, in his delivery, in in the way. Just just a tiny example. The way I often heard John starting a song, and I said, "Oh my God, he's taking that too high," and then he'd come to the high part, and he'd soar, and it was absolutely beautiful, you know. After all, crumbs great disaster. When our phone suit was master, it was you who first plunged in and swam the Shannon's boiling sir. Just a beautiful style, a beautiful relaxed style of singing. The song flowed out of John. Sometimes I got the impression he wasn't singing at all. It was something inside him was just producing this amazing sound. And um, the, the old hint of roguery in the eye and in the character and in the behaviour made this all the nicer, you know, because John was never solemn about his singing. And I, I have little time for people who get too solemn about their music or their songs. I think if you can't laugh at yourself, you're going to have a very tough time. Um, I love the same roguery, of course, in Tim. So Tim... I would have met him on a couple of occasions in the 80s and 90s, and uh, he was a major influence on me as a songwriter. I'll sing of Mikey Cleary, who in this town did dwell. He worked in Frawley's music lounge upon you all know well. 
Joe Frawley was a counsellor full of wit and rural charm with a maize food store and the shop next door and a 90 acre farm. When the first time I heard the murder of Joe Frawley was in Kilgarvan in Jackie Healy Ray's pub sometime in the, I think, late 80s, mid 80s probably. Uh, on, on, on a Sunday midday singing session and uh, it was a song that absolutely blew me away I thought it was the funniest thing I ever heard the, the great song about the 1985 weather which goes to show that you can make a good song out of almost anything 1985 I remember the summer it was shocking yeah. And I remember that song coming out, and I remember hearing him singing it somewhere, I don't know where, and I remember uh, other people singing it, I think, but I remember it at the time, yeah. because it was uh, a, sh a shocking summer, and this song was uh, just excellently put together. Well, this rare I'm inspired or fired by poetic drive. But conditions this year of the Lord 1985 have led me frustrated with hatred of this rain that we've had far to write down on paper this caper that's driving. And a great sense of fun and a great sense of irreverence, which you have to have if you're going to write comic songs. And I think Tim had all those things. John had them as well. But Tim translated it into, or channeled it into songwriting. John just challenged it, I think, into his lifestyle, as far as I could see. He was always this laid back, gentle, sort of um, a man who could not be worried. Where did you grow up? Where did you grow up? Yeah. Um, Partly, uh, early on in, in Cork City, mm -hmm. or very early age. And what brought you from Cork but then out, uh, out of Cork City? My father came from our own band here, a place called Kilcorny, above that here. And uh, where we were brought up was about within 20 miles of it, like. You know. There was Explain. no work. Back in the 1940s and 50s, there was very little work. And my father went over to, to England to get work, and he, he got work. And did he bring you one by one or all together? Or? He, more or less one by one. One by yeah. one, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he got himself a council house in England and uh, he uh, he called us over one by one, yeah. And were you happy to go? Oh. Very excited at the time, right? because, mm -hmm. uh, because he was there, like. So y you really... You discovered music more when you were in England than when you'd been a small child at home. Am I right in thinking that? Uh, yes. And I think, you know, sharing songs and tunes is a, a, it's a spirituality. It's, a, it's food for the mind and food for the soul as well, uh, which is, you know, which keeps us sane um, in many, many different occasions, I think. I suppose it's connection to our um, place and our culture and history and the music itself, the music itself, the airs themselves are beautiful so my musical air will be, you know, drawn to that. But more than that, the, the story of the songs connections to most we will say and people mentioned in the songs and places that you can connect to and know in your head or in your imagination when you're singing and really a big part of it well for me over the last whatever number of years that I'm singing anyway is the connection with people you know the meeting of people and uh, you had brothers and sisters as well were they musical my s our sister was was, uh, was musical, and, and she loved she loved the the, the music of the operas and the f Philharmonic orchestras, etc. You know, and, and film music, Hollywood film music. She had a good voice. Yes, yeah, she, she could sing. She'd nice sing around the whole thing. And, uh, Is she alive still? No, no, uh, no. We're, we're the last two. Uh, okay. Uh, 
now that they're both gone, you see, it's it's even more important that we remember what they left us. There's a great bond. There was a great bond and a great friendship among musicians and singers, as you well know. Um, it's a bond of friendship that, in my case, lasted with your father for all of those years, all 40 and more. It's just like-minded people that get together. They have similar views on many things in life. We sing because we enjoy it, and there was no better examples of that than John and Tim. As regards John, certainly, uh, I would imagine that he's been an inspiration to many of the subsequent generations. Uh, he, uh, he, he was so admired, and he was so technically good and so uh, stylish in his delivery of the song. I think, I think, I think both their legacies are assured, really. But, John's in terms of, of delivery of the song and absolute beautiful traditional style and <clears throat> I think their legacy has to be that, that this, their recordings are there and anyone who wants to be a good singer or a good songwriter I think has to go back and listen to some of these Fair maiden I cried your love I crave, for beauty is the Lord of all. I will wrap you in my morning cloak, and I'll take you back to Easter snow. Go home, consult your parents, and indeed, kind sir, I'll do the same, and if both our parents, they give consent, neither you nor I shall share the blame. Well, Tim's, in, in, in songwriting, Tim's le legacy, I think, is obvious because I think he raised standards. He, if, I, if any young songwriter was asking me advice about who to listen to in comic song, Tim would be on the short list of three or four. It's great that they have been, that John and Tim have been recorded and that there are recordings of them. Uh, because I was, I mean, I, this for me was great because I sat down last night and listened to the to the recordings and I will be going back to them and um, so they have left their legacy in in, in, in their recordings and uh, people who are interested in songs will want to be listening to those so that's a legacy that they have. I would hold John and Tim out as, as very good models for anyone starting out trying to be a, a good singer or a good songwriter. It was taken on the banks of the Black Water in, in North Cork, not not far from where we were reared, and it was, it was a weir, a weir for catching salmon for a hatchery, you know, but uh, didn't function anymore as that. But we used to go up there every Sunday, swimming and messing around in the river. You know. We had we had wild, wild free lives, you know. to kill. Give over your doctors and medical treatment. I'd rather one squeeze of the bold lady quill for rambling or bowling, for football or coursing, for drinking black porter as fast as you'd fill. In all your days roving you'll find on so jovial as our muskery sportsman the bold teddy quill. The bold teddy quill.